Hey YouTube. So lately I've been doing some dual sport riding and I've been wondering about boots and I watched a bunch of videos about like dual sport specific boots. The reviews were mixed. So what I found is my O'Neill Rider boots have been working just fine. After you break them in, you know, I want to walk around and look at stuff. I'm not like in uh, ski boots with these things. But again, you have to be careful because you got the steel tip for uh, ride motorcycles. And that's where you need to figure out what's your priority. Protecting your, your uh, legs, your shin bones, your toes, or hiking around. So... If your goal is to ride your motorcycle and go hiking around, just pack a pair of hiking boots in, your, in a backpack. And then just let your boots be what they're supposed to be. I've been thinking about it a lot and I would rather ride in boots that are actually made for riding motorcycles. Because anything you get, you get a boot that's a hybrid for riding motorcycles and uh, hiking in, it's going to not do good at either one. So you might as well just specialize and have both. But for walking in, um, the sole, they work decently enough. Would I want to walk miles in these? No, of course not. But like I say, these don't act like ski boots once they're broken in. And the break-in period was kind of long with them. The other thing, I can wear proper knee guards, knee shin guards underneath them because these boots have a really wide opening, so if you actually have uh, calves with some muscle on them, these boots are going to fit you. I had I bought a pair of uh, Alpine Stars, and they were far too narrow. They wouldn't, my leg wouldn't fit in them. I couldn't buckle them. But these fit great, very comfortable. <laughs> so okay, guys, I just got back from a ride. And let's look at these O'Neill Rider boots a little more closely. So you've got uh, like a heat shield material here on the inside of the boot along with uh, the hard plastic that protects your um, ankle on the inside all the way around. One of the things I really liked about these boots over others in this price range is that it still features a stitched sole. All around here rather than a bonded um, I've had other, my the other pair of boots I had before these that I wore for probably 10 years or more had the same thing and uh, they just last a long time so the buckles it's one thing I'm not super fond of are these t-shaped buckles they can be a bit of a hassle to get the pins to fit in there when you're putting a boot on I've had other style buckles that I liked a lot better um, now that I'm used to them, they're not terrible, but something to keep in mind. You've got a really nice shin guard on the front, and I've had rocks come up and actually hit me there while I'm riding along. And the combination of the shin guard and then just wearing these are Fox uh, combination of these shin guards that I've had for a long, long time. Um, you, don't, you, you know the rock hit you, but you don't feel anything. Another nice feature I like which got me thinking like, why am I looking at dual sport boots when these already have a good sole on them? These aren't that slick type of sole uh, that a lot of motocross boots come with. They actually have some tread to them. So you, you know, you can walk around. Are you gonna hike in them? No, um, but when I first got these boots, they were really, really stiff. And I thought, oh man, I read that they took a long time to break in. So I just put them on, um, I didn't have the shin guards in them, and uh, I wore them around my yard, and then I actually went and walked my dog for over a mile in them. Um, it wasn't exactly the most pleasurable experience I've had, but they broke in a lot quicker that way, and now they're really comfortable. So, what are they, I think I paid around $100 for these off Amazon with free shipping when I bought them, and that was uh, last summer. And so these have got a year of use on them. And they're holding up well. I haven't had any trouble with them. So I've got, I've got uh, dirt bikes. I've got uh, dual sport bikes. And I, I can't, I, I actually, I know it's like a cliche, but I actually feel naked if I'm not wearing riding boots. 
when I ride a motorcycle and I've just been wearing these for my dual sport bikes. Uh, something that you want to think about, you're riding your dual sport bike and you're riding off road, the chances of you dropping the bike on top of you and it in your leg getting caught between the motorcycle and the ground are higher on a dual sport bike simply because the tires generally suck so you're slipping and sliding around and the bikes are really heavy compared to a dirt bike and to go ride in something that's has less protection than a motocross boot i don't think that's a wise idea so i hope this video helps you guys out um let me get a measurement of the calf opening and then we'll call it a video so i what i did is i took the boot and i buckled it to where i typically uh to where i keep it and you're about five yeah you're easily five and a quarter inches side to side and depth wise looks like about yeah six and a quarter inches so these boots um I think these are the, I don't know how, what other boots are as far as large cap, calf openings, but uh, from what uh, from the other views I watched before I bought these, that's what people noted, that these will fit if you've got a bigger calf. So I like them. After they break in, they're uh, quite a comfortable boot and lots of protection. All right, guys, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.